Five Questions with Leroy Butler. Now, here's Tom Silverstein. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Five Questions with Leroy Butler. We just finished week two, and it's yeah. on to week three. And week wait, two, wait, wait, wait. Yes. Your haircut looks yes. amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I only yeah. do the best. I'll give a little plug to Ortiz Brothers yeah. for um, cutting my hair. Did you tip? That's a nice one. job. I did. I, 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 I think they would you say correct. I tipped pretty I well today. Correct. My mom always told me to treat people nice who serve your food, your drinks, and cut your hair. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I am the same thing. Yep. Well, My parents good. were the same way. Yeah. Um, so quite a lot of a lot to talk about. Let's oh, start yeah. with yeah. the obvious, which was uh, the Packers won a game with Mal- Malik Willis at quarterback yeah. in a very different way. Well, you all media folks, because y'all like to say all kind of crazy stuff. Were you surprised when you were in the box with your colleagues when this thing was starting uh, to look like they You're were asking me if I was surprised? Not oh. so much you, but just what were people think? What's people's reaction? Because you're there with all the media guys, and I mean, you know. I knew that LaFleur was going to come up with a game plan yeah. that took advantage of Willis's. Um, Mm-hmm. you know, uh, legs and speed and, and experience in the option and yeah. read option. But I didn't think it was going to be like that. I didn't yeah. think it was going to be 53 runs, and I didn't think mm-hmm. he was only going to throw 14 times. Yes. I thought, you know, Indianapolis would make him throw, but but they played so well up front, mm-hmm. and the floor kept them off balance. What, what, what do you think was yeah. the key to that? Well, I'm... I'm gonna game plan. I'm gonna. Uh, I think the best thing about being a, a a a person that not only gets therapy that can comfortably have an open mind to everything when you admit you're wrong. Because I think uh, I was totally wrong about maybe just uh, playing Clifford, who knows. Probably more than Malik, because Malik's been here three weeks. Mm-hmm. Because I wanted to kind of protect, in my mind, protect Malik, because I didn't want it to go wrong, and then yeah. everybody just come down on him. Right. But I was wrong. Malik wants that smoke. In other words, give it to me. I can make it work. I'm really proud of him, but I'm also proud of Matt Lafleur. And here's why: to me, the gold standard of coaching. Today, for the last five years, is Kyle Shanahan. And the reason why I say that, he doesn't care who's a running back. Yeah. He doesn't care who's a quarterback. Right. He's had five to seven defensive coordinators for whoever. It don't matter. Him and John Lynch have a system. Mm-hmm. And you believe in the system. If you got a great player, fine. If you don't, our system is going to beat you. So I'm that's the gold standard. That's what I felt like leaving the stadium. Man, Matt LaFleur is a hell of a coach, because I'll tell you why. A lot of people say, well, he had a Hall of Fame quarterback. He won all those games. That was all Aaron Rodgers. And then, okay, you went with Jordan Love. Yeah, but Jordan Love's a great quarterback. You know, and I said, but he has the youngest team in the league. It was all yeah, but, yeah, but. Now they got the youngest team in the league again. Mm-hmm. You got a quarterback who, let's be honest, Tennessee gave up on him. They said, you know what? Yeah. We, we, we're going to trade you just to move on. We let Will Levitz and who we'll talk about later. But Mason Rudolph's their backup. It, exactly. So they gave up on him. So moving forward, it made me feel good about Malik. When he met with the media, he kept his answers short and tight. I like that. He didn't ramble. He didn't go up. Listen, I understand the fact that when somebody gives up on you or, or say something about you that you can go out there and prove it. Now, the only thing is the penalty is the first drive, but Josh Jacobs, you, and, and to your point, Joe Mixon, hit Indianapolis for 30 carries, mm-hmm. over 150 yards. So you knew, okay, put a 2,000 guys up front and make him throw it. Right, right. You would think that 
they had it stacked in the box, but they had a great game plan. And they ran the same run plays that they always run. Yeah. And it, I think it kind of confused Indy. I think they did a great job of yeah. predicting um, how Indianapolis would play all the fakes, the ends of yes. rounds. Great and I think they were great right. Point. The other thing that I think was phenomenal, and I could be overstating it, but mm. those guys don't run that offense. That offensive mm. line doesn't necessarily run that offense. Those mm. uh, wide receivers. Yeah, they do a lot of motion, but they don't yeah. do a ton of fake handoffs and stuff. Everybody yeah. had to learn that and mm-hmm. and then execute it, you mm-hmm. know. So all the pulling they did, all those things, that's yeah. all, you know, they had to throw that into the game plan. And for them to all get it right, they mostly yeah. did. You didn't see, like, mm-hmm. any re- too many just blown assignments or, you know, where... Mm-hmm. Jacobs got cr- crushed in the backfield or anything like that. No, that's a good point because I think a lot of the illusion of the San Francisco running game or the Packers running game is, you remember Rodgers used to say he doesn't like motion? Right, right. Now, I always told you, as a defender, okay, as even a Hall of Famer, anytime the offense moves a guy, it's a potential for a big play. Because in defense, we're set, okay? Strong right, weak left. If a guy moves, okay, I got to go strong left, weak right. If the other guy over there doesn't get that call, touchdown. Mm-hmm. If the other guy down front doesn't get that call, big hole. You always got to move somebody. Make us find where the ball is. Right. And sometimes it's too late. So. Any kind of misdirection or plays you move or shifts. And then this is the reason why it's a great locker room. The receivers went into the game, Tom, knowing they weren't going to get 15 targets. They weren't going to get 10 targets. And they were okay with it. Christian Watson didn't get a single target. And and you don't see him turning over the water jug, kicking the net. He just, hey, man, I'm playing my role. Because when we all... When we all get a ring, and they're an orchestra, they're not a band. Mm-hmm. Bands break up all the time. You've never read that an orchestra broke up. They just get another conductor and make it work. That's the good thing about this team. They're unselfish and they're young. Yeah, and you know, it, it was for that day yeah. and that game plan, everybody bought in, everybody, yes. um, you know, did what they had to do, sacrificed what they had to sacrifice. Yeah. But we all know that's not sustainable to that's run just for 53 one times. Right. That's just for one week. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> and the NFL is an ever-moving yeah. forward Absolutely. entity. Absolutely. And so now you go into week two, and it's possible Willis will start again against his former team, the Tennessee yes. Titans. Uh, we'll find out about Jordan Love. I you know, was told he had a really good week of rehab, which is why they didn't rule him out. I still think he wasn't going to play under any circumstances, yeah. but um, I think he's getting closer, and then they'll make a decision on him this week. Uh, but we all know the, the Titans are a little different entity because they're leading the league in defense right now. They're number one in yards mm-hmm. allowed. They have a great front led by Jeffrey Simmons. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So when they load yeah. the box, it might be a little different than... Indy. So what, what's the next step for Malik Willis? To evolve into, I want to say this for the audience. You don't need the whole playbook that you had in April, May, June, and July. We take pieces from it. It's almost like creating a meal. You don't bring everything that you shop for and make it. No, you get the ingredients you need to make just that dish. Mm-hmm. So and when people say uh, game manager, why is that bad? You had a conservative game plan. Why is that bad? You have to have a game plan to win. If you went out there and let this guy throw it 40 times, he had five interceptions, oh, he would, why didn't he get more conservative? So the coaches have to understand that when you're looking at Tennessee, and you, I think, again, the media wants to know there's a chip on his shoulder. He don't have time to get into that. But what's going to happen is the system is the system. 
you'll run plays, but it'll be things off of it. Mm -hmm. It may be a bootleg here, maybe a play action here, and Romeo Dobbs, I mean, just throw it to me. One of the best 50-50 ball catchers probably in the last 15, 20 years. Just throw it to me. He'll go up and get it. You're going to see some of that because in two-minute drills, it's on the lead mm -hmm. to get to calls that he likes. That's what I like about Stinovich and Matt LaFleur because we can give you all that stuff. Now, tell us what you like. Yeah. So you got to get in that two-minute. Because what if you're coming from behind and you do have to throw it a bunch? These are the throws I like. Right, right. And these are the throws I don't like. All quarterbacks do that. So I'm expecting see, that. My, uh, the thing I want to see from Willis is he, you could tell um, he can get away from pressure. Yes. You know, he's really good at, yeah. at escaping pressure. Yeah. But the next step, I think, is, okay, escape the pressure, now look to pass. Mm -hmm. Don't look to run pass like mm -hmm. you know one of those runs he had he had Christian Watson coming right across yeah. you know love if he had seen that mm -hmm. you know he would have thrown it on the run yeah um, I think that's the next progression for Willis is mm -hmm. you know one stay in the pocket and go to your stick with your progressions and when you get out of the pocket look to throw don't mm -hmm. look to necessarily run so I think that's the next progression what do you and, think yeah I, I do and I think that's I think that's fair uh, but I think uh, they got tailor-made stuff that's for him because he's faster than Joy Love, but Joy Love can throw better than him. Mm -hmm. So we got to put the combination together because people are going to start to scout him like a real starter yeah. and chart his plays, and then now you can go to play action. Joy Love is one of the best – at ball handling. So he'll say, when you're doing this play, pull it and duck it. Let the safety see your name. He'll come up, then you can throw it behind him. They have plays in that they really didn't have to go to, Tom. Mm -hmm. They got, I mean, we're getting eight to nine yards of, of a run. Let's just keep doing it until they stop it. Then he hit uh, right over the middle, and then the throw he made to Dottavian was for the touchdown. That was on a rope. Mm -hmm. If it's off, this much yeah, as a it's pick, a pick six. six, yeah. But I want people to go back and look at that, the angle that he threw that pass. So the coaches will go back and build off of that, and they'll throw, throw a lot of comebacks. Run deep, come back, the ball's there. Uh -huh. Play action right over the middle, and they'll get back to utilizing the tight ends a little bit more. Because okay. I'm going to tell you something, Indianapolis, they were like, at some point, wasn't even paying the tight ends any. He's not going to throw it to the tight end, so don't even worry. He's not going to throw it at all. So. Yeah, so he's not going to do this. He's not going to do that. Oh, he did it. So I think they'll utilize the tight ends and the backs. But that's where your ratings come from. And get that confidence, and then after that, whatever in the playbook you like, we're going to run it. Who has a bigger advantage? Tennessee knowing Malik Willis or Malik mm -hmm. Willis knowing Tennessee's defense? I think it's a wash. Tennessee, they probably they probably forgot what number he was. They were so glad to get rid of him because he had a, a game where I think he started one game, I think, with them, or in a preseason he played. They just gave up. They just gave up on him, and they were glad to get that phone call. Or they maybe offered, I don't know. But him knowing those guys, he was ready to leave too because they didn't, like, just like help him with the mechanics of being a starting quarterback. It was just, we're going to draft another guy and we're moving on. But I'm sure he's familiar <clears throat> with the system. But as far as. It's a first year yeah. defensive coordinator, Derek exactly. Wilson. He comes from Baltimore. You know, yeah. so I don't know how much he. It's not. It, that's he, what I'm saying. They stayed in training camp. You yeah, know? but it's. I think the fan base of knowing they're going to make it difficult for him because he just won. Mm -hmm. He has all the headlines. And now you're going back. Yeah. So they're going to boo. They're going to do these things. But the thing about the Packer fans, no, do we buy up all the tickets. It'll be like a home coming for him. But that was a good question, though. So I think it's, just, I think it's a wash. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's um, 
talk defense for a little while. Uh, okay. You know, I think the Packers played Anthony Richardson a lot better than they played Jalen Hurts. But I also think it was different circumstances. I think Indianapolis's offensive line isn't near as good as Philadelphia's. Uh, their wide receivers aren't nearly as good. But, you know, in the end, they only gave up 10 points. Yeah. What, what more do you want to see from that? What did you like, and then what more can they do? I want to see more pressure on the quarterback. I really do. I, sometimes Richardson and Jalen Hurts stood back there, I mean, five, six progressions. I mean, you got to either get after the quarterback or you have to get turnovers, and they got turnovers. Mm -hmm. I mean, Xavier getting two uh, picks. We got, what, five so far, or four or five? Five, yeah. We had seven all the last <laughs> right. right. All the last year in 17 games. So they're ahead of the curve. Should be so, noted that McKinney's yeah. interception was partially the result of pressure. So the one, oh, one that, of the times yeah. they did get pressure, yes. they forced an interception. Yes. Quay yeah. Walker was in his face. When yes, he was. He That's a good that. point. Yeah. And, and speaking of Quay Walker, probably could have caught one. He looked like Leroy Butler right there. Because the ones that hit me right here, I always drop them. I like when they're off the side and they're <laughs> fluttering a little bit. Or somebody it, tips it. It hit them in a bad place. Yes. That's why we're on defense. Yeah. But, but I, let's get back yeah. to your pressure. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. I think what I want to see, and mm -hmm. this might be the week that we do see it. Oh yeah, is that they're playing yeah. a guy who's not a breed option or dangerous guy outside yes. of the pocket. Yes. And so, you know, talking to those guys, you know, they rush one way because their whole key is not don't let Jalen Hurts, don't let Anthony Richardson get outside. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of takes away some of your rush, right? I mean, if, if well, yeah. the lineman knows you're only coming from, to the outside. Yes. And you just two gap. And you just, I want to see more pressure or they need to generate it. When I say generate it, yes, I want to see more five man pressures, uh, maybe six man pressures. Uh, because the Tennessee quarterback Levitz, the last two games, when you pressure him, he do he do all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Against Chicago, he tried to shuffle, pass it out, pick six. And then last week, he just was trying to do – pressure makes you do all that kind of stuff. So I'm sure Halfley uh, – like, you remember the 15-1 season when they gave up a ton of yards – but they got a few turnovers and people were okay with it, but they ended up losing. The Packers were like 15 and one. The defense gives up a ton of yards, but they were winning all these games. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, you're gonna play a team that gonna use that against you. So, and then I would think playing the run is, I mean, Jonathan Taylor had 12 carries over 100 yards. I mean, he had a couple big runs. So they got. I think they're still working out the linebacker situation. Yeah, I think who's so going to play base? Who's going to play nickel? Because I'm going to tell you something, Eric Wilson. I'm so glad that people can see 45. This guy is athletically sound, and his interception, you know, he caught it. Yeah. But he read that it was a middle read. Yeah. yeah. Most guys will stop there, and the guy the quarterback will hit it. Right. Right. I'm guaranteed the. The coach has told Richardson, I don't care who that linebacker is, he'll stop so you can anticipate right. the guys open. But Eric Wilson is a guy that is going to want to play. He's Cooper good wants to play. Yeah. So he's, his, The only yeah. problem with Eric Wilson is the size. Yeah. I mean, he is faster than any yeah. linebacker they've got. And he's strong. He's smart. You know, yes. he, he knows how to play the game. Mm -hmm. But... You know, Why do you think size matter in this um, game? You know, if you're going to be a strong side yeah. linebacker yeah. and you're in your base defense and they got double tight ends or something, they're going to they're going to take advantage of that, okay. kick him out. I mean, he's what, 220 pounds maybe. Yeah, but he's strong enough to play it. I mean, well, we'll see. And Sam think, Mills is only like five nine. Yeah, but a different fighting. kind of. I know, but I'm just saying. Player. The, the young man, one of my best friends. Uh, who just went into the Hall of Fame from Miami. I want people to do their homework. 
he's only like five nine. But yeah, but Zach, it's not. It's about Zach Thomas. It's about your stature and your. No, you know, it's he's not. he's no. He's not a big thick guy. You don't need to be big and thick. Just get the job done. Okay. Well, I think there's a reason that you know he he doesn't play as much as well, we he does. But they can use him. I've seen guys big, strong, and lose contain. I mean, we have to just see if a guy can play. Because some kids watching this in high school, where well, Tom said, I have to be 6'3", 250 pounds to play linebacker. I say you play that six feet. If I got a guy who is six. You want to get off the bus, guy. 6'2", 230, yeah. and he runs as fast as Eric Wilson, yeah. Adrian Cooper. Yeah. I'm getting him on the field. I'm going to okay. find a way to get him on the field eventually. Right now, Eric mm -hmm. Wilson's probably more productive, you know. I'll go with production. But eventually, you got to get it, Edwin Cooper on the I, field. Well, we'll, you'll give him a chance. Don't leave your feet. Uh, you know, take on the right block, arm free. Be fundamentally sound. That's what we, I think we both agree on. Whatever size you are, be fundamentally sound. And that's up to the coaches, Tom, to find packages for their guys yeah. like that. It's true. Because but they got to be can play, man. Yeah, he can. He can hit you run. That's why we drafted him. Right. So we got to find out when to put 45 out there, when to put 56 out there, when to put 58 and number seven. So I think that's what they're working with right now. Yeah, I And think I think so. when they get that together, they're going to be exciting. Okay. Are you worried about the kicker? I'll be honest. Because I'm a, a, a proponent for mental health, anxiety, um, all of that. I have a new app I'm starting, Leap Therapy. When Carlson runs on the field, it did give me anxiety. It did. I'll be honest. When Narvison run out there, I don't have any anxiety. I feel good that he's going to make the kick. So I'm not worried about it. And I know people. Well, why? Yeah. Because he's missed, too. Well, see, I don't focus on the miss. I focus on the maids. Because he made, what, three or two? He's six, uh, well, for Wait, the season, he's six of eight. Yeah. See, I concentrate on the six. Because it could be two of eight. I tell you what, what Narvison runs out there for a kick, I just don't feel like he's going to shank it or hit it, you know, hit it wrong. And when he made the first couple, that was when he made his first kick, that was the loudest I've heard Lambo this year until when they introduced me at halftime. <laughs> that was loud. So so I don't think it I think we have our kicker and we're gonna keep developing him. So I don't So you I say be patient. Yes. And let him he's gonna miss his miss the ones. He, he just had to be higher percentage time with the 30s and 40s because if you're going for it if you miss a 50 yarder they get that ball right there they got great field position yeah. so if he can just make the ones like in the 30s and 40s in the 90s you're going to be okay yeah i think but it does put the defense in a spot i'll tell you who i'm not worried about at all is the punter yeah the punter to me Weldon, Weldon? Wheeling. Wheeling is at a high level. Yeah. Because they were backed up and he hit that 59 yarder. Yeah. That might have been the play of the game. But the reason why I like that question, because special teams and kicking, when you're having a quarterback, a new quarterback, you got to be flawless. Because if he makes that kick and you go up 19, I mean, go up, I would have been 19 to six or whatever, it's difficult for them to come back. Also, if, you know, Josh didn't turn the ball over on the one yard line and you wouldn't have so many penalties at the beginning, that game could have been a blowout. But I just hope 30s and the 40s, he makes those at a higher clip. I'm not worried. Okay, last thing. Yep. Um, let's say you get to the end of the week and the doctors tell you Jordan Love is clear. He can play, but, you know, don't expect him to be running out of the pocket a lot. Don't expect him to have the same amount of, you know, elusiveness. He's probably 
you know, not going to be quite a hundred percent, which I ain't many guys to, play. Yeah, I ain't Are you playing that. them or not playing? Them? No, I need him to do everything you said not to do. Okay. I got to see everything. So you want to see another? You would rather yeah. him wait another week if yeah. that's the case. If yes. He's cleared and yes, but isn't quite a hundred percent. Because I trust the doctors. You got to remove the coaches. Put the coaches out. Because the doctors think about you after football and out of the jersey. So if he tell, if he goes on the field and works me out, then, because I got to set my roster, because if he's going to play, then Malik is your backup, then Clifford, you know, do I, am I going to deactivate yeah, him or put him down or what? The, the scenario is they say, look, he's not going to make it worse. He's okay. He's clear. He's not going to be a hundred percent because you know his knees still flexibility probably not there. He's not going to hurt it, but he's mm -hmm. not going to be. You're not going to want him to be doing all these rollouts and, and stuff like that. Do you play him or don't play? Him? I'm not going to play him because I want to open my playbook up for him to do everything. And in my mind, I'm thinking I need him for Minnesota at home because Minnesota playing out right. of their mind right now. Yeah. So. Me and Doc McKenzie used to have these discussions away from the coaches. How you feel? I feel fantastic. Okay, let's go run on it. Coach, it's going to be coming to find out if you're active or not. Because they got to activate and deactivate, guys. You go work out, come, hey, man, I feel great. Okay, let's go with it. Well, you know, I really couldn't do rollouts. I really couldn't throw back across my body. You know, I can't, I don't know if I, you know, protect myself. If I get a big rush and got to move, then I re-injure it. Now I'm out eight weeks. So, and nobody's going to be 100% at the end of the year. No. But now, so me, I, yeah. I would roll with Malik one more week. Yeah, I wonder. What would you do? You well, would I, I roll think, the dice and put him out? No, I think what oh. I would do yeah. if he's cleared and yeah. you're told you know, he can withstand a hit. Um, I would start Willis and mm. keep Love active as an emergency guy, just in case. You know, maybe keep three quarterbacks active um, so that if, you know, it gets to a situation where the game, you know, Willis is just not producing at all, yeah, the option of using Love. But this is all predicated on them saying he's okay, you know. I don't know mm. if that's going to be the case this week. We'll find out. Yeah, I just would like to, um, it's either she's pregnant or she's not. I don't want that in between. Well, but there's, you we have plan instances. Or you're not. We have instances where, you know, Favre yeah. went out there with his ankle taped, you Favre know, different, like, a, like a Frankenstein and could not move out of the pocket. And that was a big part of his game. He threw yeah. for five touchdowns against the Bears. So I don't know. You know, it's you know what he told me? Roy Lee ain't nothing wrong with my arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't care about this stuff. Nothing wrong with my arm. He was built different. He never missed a game. Yeah. But he was a little different in those days, too. You yes. Know, you kind of right spit on that. it. Yes. And, and but and as far as a, 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 your prize quarterback, I say give him one more week. If he got okay. close this week, give him one more week. Let Malik go play his former team. Yeah. Beat them, come back against Minnesota. And you're right. They do need love to be 100%. That's yeah. close to 100% for the record. Yes. All yes. right. Um, don't forget to join us for X's and O's because we will look at a play by Eric Wilson, which yes. was really impressive. And then um, I want you to describe what the Packers were doing with all the play action fakes and polling and stuff. We have a couple of plays to look at from that. Okay. Before you think, um, everybody who. Let's go with your prediction. Now, I know you always yell at me because you think I'm going to pick the Packers all 17 weeks. I don't always pick the yes, Packers, but I'm going to pick them this week. Malik, Shock. Is, you be nice. You know I make that phone call. Shock. Make that phone call. But Malik plays one more week. They're going to win 23 to 10. And Josh Jacobs is going to get two touchdowns. He owes me one because he's on my fantasy team. So the Packers continue the win streak two games. And then yeah. get anybody you want to think? Yeah. If you're in Oconomowoc, 
this Saturday, the 21st, I'll be at By the Yard to sell the best outdoor furniture ever from 12 to 3. The first couple hundred people get a free 8 by 10 photograph that it's worth a lot of money because Tom will pay big money for it. I try to and steal them all the time. If, if this Friday, I'll be doing a mental health summit with Strive 365. You can come by the Milwaukee Youth Center. It's at 830. Parents, please come. It's free. And we also give you something uh, that's, that's free. And I want to thank Pick and Save, of course. You can go to Pick and Save slash Leroy Butler, follow my recipes. If you're looking for a new window or door, always go to Milwaukee Window Guys. Tell them Leroy Butler sent you. That's MilwaukeeWindowGuys.com. They got the best prices on everything. Leap 36 podcast. Everywhere you get podcasts, me and Gary Ellison. All right.